Morning sixth grade, happy Monday. Welcome to investigation number three. Uh, today in the investigation, we're going to work on coordinate planes. So I'm going to start to read through all the information you need. I have some of that in your uh, yellow folder for you to look at. It says a coordinate plane is a grid formed by two perpendicular number lines. So you can see that here, perpendicular number lines. The x-axis always goes horizontal. So I wrote the x here, guys, that you can see. X numbers go this way. Obviously, y's are the vertical. The origin is the point at which the x and the y intersect. So this is 0, 0, right, where we, where we cross those things. Coordinates are two numbers that tell the location of a point. They're always written as a pair of numbers in parentheses. Okay, so they show you when I give coordinates, it's always in parentheses like that, 3, 2. The first number shows which direction to go horizontally. So x always goes first. The second number tells to go vertically. Y goes second. Uh, that makes sense. That's alphabetical. So alphabetical this way first, second, up and down, second. The sign of the number indicates the direction. So if it's positive, I'm going to go to the right on the x. If it's positive, I'm going to go up on the y. If it's negative, I'm going to go left on the x. If it's negative, I'm going to go left on the y. The origin is 0, 0, 0. Okay, now guys, they have that little chart here that talks about first, second, third, and fourth quadrants really good. I'll explain a quadrant as I read on. Quadrants are the four regions of a plane divided by the two axes. Quadrants are numbered counterclockwise starting in the upper right. Every point on the plane is either in a quadrant or on an axis. So I got first quadrant if both numbers are positive. I got second quadrant. I have x is negative but y is positive. I got third quadrant. Both numbers are negative. And I got fourth quadrant. The x is positive and the y is negative. Now true or false? Every number is one of those four quadrants. That's false. Did you see what they said? If I'm on the line, guys, I'm not in a quadrant because zero is not positive or negative. So to be in the first quadrant, the numbers have to be positive. Okay, so I'm either on a quadrant or I'm on the line. Those lines have a name called axes, plural, axis, singular. Okay, example one, it says name the coordinates for point A. So I have this here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the right. And I just count one, two, three, four to the right. So in my little blank on my piece of paper, and I don't know what I do with my pen. Hang on. Okay, so I had my piece of paper here. I went to the right four, so I write in the number four. Okay, now you can't see that, so I'll also put it on the board for you, but I was just showing you where to write down the thing. So you got A in parentheses. I went over four, and then I went up three. So I have two positive numbers, four, three. Now it says find point B. The first thing I do is left to right. I'm going left, one, two, three. So that's a negative three. And I'm going up, one, two, three, four. So it's a positive four. Okay, put in parentheses. It's already there for you. And then point C. I go over C, one, two, three, four, five. So it's at negative five. It doesn't go up or down at all. If it's on the line, guys, it's zero. So it's negative five, zero. That should be written into A, B, C there, and we're done with the first one. Flip it over. Example two, it says graph the following points on a coordinate plane. I'm going to graph three, four. So I'm going to move over here, guys. I'm going to count over three, one, two, three, up four. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to put a dot. This is at 3, 4. Next one says, please graph 2, negative 3. 2, go over 2, negative 3, go down 3. Put a dot. This is at 2, negative 3. Next one I'm graphing is negative 1, 2. Negative 1, left first, up second. Boom. And last one, please graph 0. Don't go left or right, but go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then they just gave you all those directions, guys, on how you begin and you move it 3, 4, and then you go 4, and at that point I dot and label the dot 3, 4, and I'll do the same. Okay, so we did all those. I did not label this one at negative 1, 3, uh, I'm sorry, negative 1, 2, and parentheses and parentheses, and this one was at 0, negative 4, and parentheses. Okay, so that's what's being done in this first one. Now you're ready for example 3. It says the vertices of a square are located at 2, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 2. Draw the square and then find its perimeters. It tells me how to do that. Step 1, graph the vertices. I'll move over here. Over 2, up 2. I'll go to the next one. It says over 2, down 1. Then it says negative 1, negative 1. So left 1, down 1. And the last one is negative 1, positive 2. 
Okay, next what it says, it says draw the square. In other words, connect the dots. So I'm just going to connect the dots to draw my square. Now mine looks a little bit more like a rectangle because I don't have good space in here, guys. Yours on your piece of paper will look like a perfect square. The sides of each square is a unit. Add all the units together so that I can label the square and find its perimeter. Okay, so I just have to count how many are there. How many across? One, two, three. So it's three across. How many up? One, two, three. Three plus three plus three plus three is 12. So in here, what's the perimeter? It is 12 units. Next one says multiply the length and the width to find the area. Three times three is nine. So your first blank had 12 units. Your next blank has nine, and they already have a label there for you. That's unit squared. Example four says three vertices of a rectangle are located at this, this, and this. Find the coordinates of the fourth vertex and the perimeter of the area of the rectangle. Okay, guys, I'm just going to erase some of these dots in here so that I can work with this one uh, to save a little time. So the first one's at 2, 1. 1, 2, up 1. Put a dot. The next one's at 2, negative 1. Over 2 again, but this time down 1. The last one's at negative 2 and down 1, negative 1, right there. Okay, so now it says graph the coordinates of that. What coordinate would form the fourth vertex? I'm drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to come across here. I need this point right here. So what is that one at? That's at negative 2 and positive 1. So I write in there negative 2, positive 1. Now, guys, there's a second way to do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. They gave me this one, 2, 1. They gave me this one, 2, negative 1. They gave me this one, negative 2, and negative 1. I think the answer is negative 2, positive 1. Now, if you look at this, guys, you need two of each number. So for my x, I need two positive 2s. I only had one negative 2. I need a second negative 2. So this one, without even plotting this, guys, I could say is negative 2. I have a positive 1, a negative 1, a negative 1. You see you have two negative ones, then you need two positive ones. And so without even graphing that, guys, you could just look at your numbers and say, which one am I missing? It's the one that there's only one of. There was two positives, I need a second negative. There were two negatives, I needed a second positive. Now it asks me to find the perimeter. Okay, I'm just going to count this. One, two, three, four. So the width is four. One, two, the height is two. How do I find perimeter? Add them together. Four plus two is six times two because there's a length on top and a width on the side. So I just add them together. Six times two is 12. So it's 12 units. What's the area? 4 times 2 is 8 units squared. So what they're doing, guys, is taking perimeter that you've already learned, taking area which you've already learned, and adding it to today's lesson, which says you first have to graph that. Okay, there's a way to do this with math, guys, and it looks like this. I take the two x's that are different, and I subtract them. So 2 minus negative 2 equals what? Now, the hard thing with this, guys, is you haven't learned this yet. But two negatives make a positive. So that is actually 2 plus 2 is 4. And 1 minus negative 1 is two negatives together make a positive. That's 2. You see how I got my 4 and 2? So I lots of times think the easiest thing to do is just count. But you can also do it with math and look at the two x values and subtract them and look at the two y values and subtract them and they give you your numbers. Okay, done with page 1. Turning to page 2. Now we get into lesson. It says graph these three points, then draw a line that passes through these points, and name a point in the second quadrant that is on the line. Awesome. Here we go. The first point I'm supposed to do is 2, 4. So I'm just over 2, up 4. The next one is 0. Don't go anywhere and go up 2. The last one is negative 3, negative 1. Go left 3, go down 1. And now that should form a straight line, guys. Okay? So that's what you're doing. You put those three dots and then you drew a line. Now we have to do the second part of that problem. It says, name a point in the second quadrant that is on the line. Remember, 
first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. And I'm going to start to look in this quadrant right here where my line goes, and I'm going to try to find one that hopefully went right through the corner where I can say, oh, I got what it is. It's, and hopefully you look at your thing and got the answer of it looks to me like I go through negative one, positive one. So in my parentheses, guys, I have negative one and positive one. It looks like it's going through that dot right there. Now, yours is going to be better than mine because I'm trying to freehand it, and you have a beautiful, nice box there that's going to um, you know, be perfectly spaced. Bumping over to example number two. It says one vertex of the square is in the origin. Two other ones are here and here. What's the coordinate of the fourth one? I'm going to bump up here. Origin is 0, 0. So they didn't give you 0, 0, guys. They're testing you from the front page. Do you know that it's 0, 0? So one point is there. The next one's at negative 2, 0. Negative 2. Go backwards. 1, 2. 0 says don't go anywhere. The next one's at 0, negative 2. So go down. Bow. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look. For my origin, I have 0, 0. So I have an, two zeros. I have this zero and I have this zero. I need another one at negative two. I have then looking at my y values, I have this y value at negative two, I have this value at zero, and I have another one at zero, so I need another negative two again. So what am I missing? I'm missing negative two, negative two. And so in your parentheses underneath your number two, you write negative two, negative two. Three. Find the perimeter and the area of a rectangle whose vertices are located at 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 4. I love it. 6, you feel free to plot that. I'm going to use this example to show you what it would look like with just doing the math right here. Okay, give me one second. Maybe during this second you're plotting those things so that you can verify if I did it right and got the correct answer. Switch colors, see if we can find a marker that's working a little better. Okay, I'm writing down the numbers. I have 3 and negative 1. I have negative 2 and negative 1. I have negative 2 and negative 4. And I have 3 and negative 4. Okay, parentheses, so it looks like coordinates. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two x's that are different. So I have 3 and negative 2. And my problem looks like this, 3 minus negative 2 equals, I stacked up two negative signs, two negatives make a positive, so two, 3 plus 2 is 5. Now I take these things that are different, it's negative 4 minus 1. Okay, and I'm subtracting those guys, now this is math that we haven't learned yet, but two negatives make a positive, so I have negative 4 plus 1. So I'm at the negative 4, I moved over 1, I'm only at 3. Now guys, I know the answer is negative 3, but when we're talking distance, we really call what's called the absolute value. There's no such thing as, how far did you go? I went negative 3 spaces. I just went 3 spaces, so we're just going to ignore that. So my length and my width is 5 by 3. I have a rectangle that is 5 by 3. Okay, for number 3 it said find the perimeter. 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 is 16. Some of you write it like this and go 5 plus 3 plus 5 is 3. Some of you go 5 plus 3 is 8 times 2 is 16. Find the area, length times width, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, now some of you could have probably plotted those four points and counted as fast as I did the math. Some of you might be confused by this math because we've never learned it yet, um, so don't do it. Some of you might say, I love this math. And I can do that math almost in my head by looking at that. Maybe that's an option for you. You have to know you and your ability uh, of math. And if that makes sense, great. If it doesn't, plot it on your coordinate plane, guys. These four coordinates, and then just simply count the spaces. Four it says points four, 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 zero, and zero, four are the vertices of a triangle. The triangle encloses whole squares and half squares on the grid. Determine the area of the triangle by counting whole squares and half squares. Obviously, two half squares would equal one whole square. I love it. Here's my coordinate plane. Point number one, four, four. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four, over four, up four, put a dot. The next one's at four, zero, over four, don't go anywhere after that. And the last one's at zero, zero, my origin. Here comes my triangle, and here it goes like this. Okay, now I'm going to try to add in these little lines here so that you guys can see what they're talking about. If I would move these lines up like this and move these lines across like this. Now they say, hey, can you please count the number of whole squares plus the number of half squares, which equals the total. Well, it looks like this. One whole square, two whole square, three whole square, four whole square, five whole square, six whole squares. So I have six whole squares plus one half square, two half square, three half square, four half squares, plus four half squares. Gives me a total of how many square units? Well guys, six, I need to put two of these together to equal a whole. So four divided by two is two. Six plus two is eight square units on the bottom one. Okay, on the blanks above it, you had six wholes and four halves to be able to get that together. Area of a triangle, those of you who know area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by two. So you could have done four times four is 16, cut in half is eight. Woo! Now we haven't taught you area of a triangle yet this year. That's why they told you to simply count it. Turning the page. Number five, it says draw a ray from the origin through the point 10, 10. Draw another way through the origin to the point 10, zero. Use a protractor to measure the angles. Okay, they're going to try to teach you something here with that. So I have a point at 10, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Shh, shh. Point. Okay, I'm also going through the origin to 10, 10. Shh. Awesome. Now it says draw 1 through 10, 0. 10, 0. Whew. Now it says measure that. Okay, so guys, you've got a protractor. You could set a protractor on there. I don't need a protractor. You know why? Because we cut this thing in half. These are perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Right angles equal 90 degrees. It's been chopped in half. So you have a 45 degree angle is what you're writing on your line. That little shaded box, guys, is where you put your degree symbol. So anytime the X and the Y values are the same, we went through 10, 10, you know it's cut perfectly in half. Number six, it says name the quadrant that contains each of these points. So guys, you're back to page one, looking at your positives and negatives here. A, both of them are negative. Both of them are negative. Third quadrant, write it down. B, both of them are positive. 12 is positive, 1 is positive. That's first quadrant. Write it down. C, is positive and then negative. It's positive and then negative. That's fourth quadrant which says then negative and positive, it's negative and then positive, it's second quadrant. So it's just taking what we learned on the first page and writing it down. Number seven says, please draw ABC with these vertices. Use a protractor to find the measures of these triangles. It's literally doing what we just did in number five, guys. Again, now watch. Here comes my uh, coordinate plane. This time I'm at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm at eight and negative eight. The other one is at negative eight and negative eight. Five, six, seven, negative eight, negative eight. Okay, so we know those things are the same, guys. And I drew my triangle. Now I just did that one from this one. What I learned? I learned this is a 45 and this is a 45. Huh? 45 plus 45, guys, is 90 degrees. So I know this guy now is literally forming a right angle at 90 degrees, which means this guy down here is my 45, and this guy over here is my 45. So they said the measure of A, A equals the 90, guys. B would have been this corner over here. B is one of those at 45, and C would have been over here. C would have also been a 45 because the eights were the same. Okay, so I had eight, eight, I had negative eight, negative eight. As long as they're the same numbers, guys, it's gonna cut that thing coming out of the origin perfectly in half, which would be 45 degrees. All right, to the last page. Number eight, it says, Shea wrote these directions for a dot-to-dot -dot drawing. To complete the drawing, draw segments from point to point in the order they are given. Okay, one second as I erase this one last time. 
so that we can do number eight. As you're going to number eight, guys, it says number nine and number 10 are optional. You could do number nine if you wanted. Number nine in your book, you'd have to open up your book to get the directions, but number nine in your book says, can you create a straight line drawing and then give the coordinates for it? If you want extra credit down here, what you do is you create a coordinate plane and then do a straight line drawing. So I'll give you an example. I would do a Christmas tree. Okay, and then you'd have to give the coordinates for this point, 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 and then back to this point, and you gave me the coordinates of how to draw a Christmas tree. Okay, some students just draw houses. They got their coordinate plane and they up, roof, roof, down, across, done. They might get, hey, I want to put a window in and give me a few more coordinates. You can make it as simple or as complex as you want. Okay. That's if you want extra credit on number nine. Let's do number eight. Eight's going to show you how to do number nine. Here's what Shay gave us. She gave us zero and four. Then number two, she gave us negative three and negative four. So I'm down here and I'm drawing a line. Then number three says five, one, two, three, four, five, and positive one. And I need to tell you not to listen to me yet. Sorry, I got to start over. I hope you were yelling at me on your computer because the first thing I did was four zero instead of zero four. So zero and then up four. Okay, sorry about that. Zero and up four. Now over three and down four. One, two, three, four, over three, down four. That's point one, two. Now it is five. One, two, three, four, five, and up one. And I cruise to that one. Then this four is negative five and positive one. So I'm going straight horizontal across that. Then I'm doing number five, which is positive three, one, two, three, and down to negative four, which brings me down that way. And then six takes me back to where I started. So Shay gave me the directions to draw a star. Okay, so sorry I messed up at the beginning, but you can see her six numbers, they always start off with the same thing. You could do the same thing and just decides how much you want to challenge yourself and get some extra credit on uh, investigation three. Okay, number 10 for that says exchange it with a classmate. Now, well, bad news, guys. You don't have a classmate to exchange it with right now. So uh, investigation three, all done. Have a day.